Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we are working on a septic install. We're going to try to get the septic field bed installed for the YouTube Yacht. This is the YouTube Yacht Project. It is a paddle wheeler steamboat shaped and themed rental cabin that we are currently building. There are lots of videos on this on the channel already, so be sure to check those out after this one. In today's video, we'll talk about a few things. Obviously, you'll see the install of the septic field. We'll also talk about cost, what it costs me to do this. We'll talk about why we're using the field style, field bed style we're using. Spoiler alerts, because the state said we had to. Let's lay this thing out, talk about bed size, and then we can start getting some of this underbrush out of the way. Also, the GoPro just keeps randomly shutting off today. Hopefully, we get all the clips we need. I average a GoPro every two months. I use the GoPro 7. I've looked at the GoPro 10s, but considering I tend to buy a new camera every two months, I have a hard time justifying that cost. Shall we? So you will notice some orange flags here. This is a corner. That is a corner. The field bed will be 10 foot by 52 feet. Here's the other two corners. Now that'll look more clear here in a second when we get some of this brush out of the way. We also have these flags. This is one of the test holes. Whenever they tested the soil. And there's one more there and one more there. Here they do three test holes for the field bed and they want you to try to center up the field bed on those test holes as best as possible. That way they have the best possible reading for the soil that is below. We are obviously in a wooded area so we do have a little bit of stuff to pull off I'm gonna drive some stakes and stretch a string all the way around so I have a better idea of what we need to clear and get out of the way. I'm pretty sure this stump is going and this other little maple stump is gonna go. These two bigger stumps here, we're just eventually gonna cut those flush off with the ground. They're not in the field bed and they don't want us to disturb the soil any more than we have to. So those will just cut off flush in the future. This might turn into like a GoPro documentary as well. It's been approximately uh, one hour since we first came out here. The GoPro keeps turning off. I can't get any clips. Part of me thinks it's because they just released the GoPro 10, so they put like some software update out. Conspiracy theory to make the 7s not work anymore, so you have to buy a new camera. But man, beyond frustrating, I'll tell you that. Here's what we're doing. I got to get each corner level so it's the same plane from one side the top side, top side, bottom side to bottom side. You want your pipes sitting in there nice and level so the water can flow through. The gray water can sit in there nice and level. You don't want your bed left or right. You don't want anything running one direction or the other. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it recorded. I just, it's going to be okay. It'll be fine. We're going to try to get all this scraped back and out of the way. We can only go nine inches deep. We can't go any deeper than nine inches or disturb the soil any deeper than nine inches, but we got to get all this stuff out of the way. The exception is going to be obviously the couple stumps that have to come out. But other than that, we can't go any deeper than nine inches on this particular site. If you want a little bit of reference to what we're looking at, Thank <laughs> you. 
that is some good minimally invasive stump removal. We just got that little one. I'm just gonna leave that one. It's on the outer edge. We'll cut that one off. Then we can pull everything back, make it look nice and neat. <sighs> Wait a second. Are these oyster mushrooms? Chelsea would be furious if I destroyed oyster mushrooms, especially this time of year. Maybe we can, let's take a look. Oh yeah, they are. Maybe we can just take this up to the house and grow some by the house. Huh? Transplant. I don't know if you guys heard that pin break on that first one. One we just put on, broke just like it did. I just put these on in the last video. The top of those keepers snap off. What happens, over time these shanks get worn from, well the teeth fall off then you're too stubborn to put another tooth on so you dig without it. And over time they get worn, they get loose like that. It allows, whenever you put pressure on it, to pull on that pin awkward, it breaks that pin. And those teeth, I think they're over 100 bucks per tooth. You can get more expensive ones, but I think the ones there just they at least if it falls off, you keep the tooth so you don't have to buy a new tooth for it or a new tip for it. But at some point, we're gonna have to have man behind the scenes build up these shanks so they fit on there a little tighter. I've seen guys weld these on there, but I don't know. All right, so the minimum we had to be was four inches, which is pretty much the depth of our topsoil here. So we got our four inches all the way down the bottom, and then we're nine inches across the top. It looks deeper than that, but I just pulled everything and piled it up there because after you get the sand on, you put topsoil on, so I'm just gonna roll that right back on top. But that's what it is on top, and it looks good. Presby wants you to leave the teeth marks so that any gray water can't just go screaming across here. This gives a place for the gray water to sit, take time to percolate. It's also more surface area if you take a cross section, super fancy cross section there, more surface area here than if it were flat. So they like that for more absorption. I will tell you in their manual, it does say it should be excavated within a quarter of an inch tolerance, plus or minus from left to right lengthwise. So for all intensive purposes, that's what it is. Sand goes down next. Minimum six inches of sand on the bottom. They also say no equipment on that exposed field bed. You're supposed to open it up and get the sand on it immediately. And you guys, you're now on this. I think the issue might have been the GoPro batteries itself. Ever since I put you on this, you seem to be recording okay. Oops, there you go. So the whole reason we have to use this system is because the state says so. The state has a chart and based on your soil type, they will tell you what system you have to have. Now we are in Indiana, so keep in mind it definitely varies region to region, state to state, county to county. You understand the process. The whole way this started, we had a gentleman come out. He did soil samples all over the property. This is actually the only suitable site we could find closest to the YouTube Yacht Build site. He sent those soil samples off to the state. The state then sent a report back and said, hey, based on your soil, this is your option. Now, sometimes you get lucky in our area, you might be able to put in chambers, which is a very less expensive option, but if your soil is good, just as effective. But unfortunately, because of our heavy clay content and very shallow limiting layer, these sand systems are kind of becoming the way to go. The state makes it more and more strict each year, and I can only imagine from here on out they get even more expensive. But for the time being, this is the system they specified. So this is the system we're putting in. So just about have this bottom edge where I want it. If I'm working by myself, I'd like to run that bottom edge first, get it perfectly 
laser level the way it needs to be crossed there with the rake. Then I'll run that top edge where it needs to be, and then I'll fill the middle in and take a two by four and screed across it just like you would concrete. If you're in the machine and you got a guy out with a grade rod and he can be constantly checking for you and you got like a fancy steel wrist or roto tilt or something like that where you can keep your blade level with the field bed and you can run it that way, definitely much easier. But if you're out by yourself in a little bit of awkward terrain dodging some stuff, just taking your time using a rake and a laser, you'll get it right. It just takes a little bit longer. So the sand bed is done, level from there to there and from here to here like it's supposed to be. I didn't start and go ahead and put the pipe in because that's the next step, but I figure I'll show you. Now if you guys have been watching Dirt Perfect's channel, any you've seen them put a lot of these systems in, so you're already fairly familiar. But all it is is a pipe, it's got these perfor perforations in there. It's got this little extra, he calls it a diaper, a little extra filter on the bottom side, then of course the fabric wrap. When you put these in, they want the seam side, see that seam? They want that side up so that that is on the bottom. That helps filter any heavy gray water, let's just call it that, out the bottom. And then it does have this little layer here. And I think all that is is just to help keep the fabric off of it a little bit so that there's airflow down and through here because this whole system kind of works on having some airflow to it but that's what these look like i told you i'd tell you a little bit about cost we have 150 feet of pipe on this which is for two bedrooms minimum for a presby system where we are at is 70 feet of this pipe per bedroom minimum row length is 50 feet what that means is, if I had enough room lengthwise, I could have done two rows of 70 feet and just had 140 feet of pipe. But because I only have enough room for a 52 foot bed, I have to do three rows, which means now I have to add an additional 10 feet so that I meet the minimum row length of 50 feet. Isn't that a neat way to sell more pipe? That can't be it, right? There's science behind it. I'm just sure of it. Let me show you how these go together. Then they have these couplers, and that's what we're getting ready to start putting on over here. So I'll show you that a little bit more close up. And then these end caps. Ooh, let's just throw that around right here. And you'll see how that goes on later in the video as well. The total price, uh, 15 of these pieces of pipe. And I got 60 foot of um, schedule 44 inch as well for just some miscellaneous stuff up at the YouTube. Yeah, part of the project, but more for the tank aspect. And then some miscellaneous SD35 fittings, sewer and drain 35 fittings, four inch. And that was all 2500 bucks. The bulk of it being this. The sand, I hauled in four loads of that. I can get 12 tons on that GMC 8500. It was a couple hundred bucks per load. And then, of course, another couple hundred bucks for fuel and truck rental for a mic. So the sand cost about a grand. So between the pipe and the sand, we're at about 3500 The soil sample was 400 bucks. We did that several, several months ago. And the tank, I almost forgot the tank. The tank with the D box, the distribution box, and the risers, that was all right around 1500 bucks. So whatever all that math is, that's what I have in this so far. And then uh, of course, any seed and straw we put on top of this, and then you can add on to that, the rest of the pipe that it'll take to get up the hill. So it's still a pretty penny. Even a DIY, if you wanna call it that, septic install is uh, still a pretty costly thing. Anyway, this is all they are. They have a little ratcheting system there. Like a big giant zip tie. That's kind of what this is. 
it doesn't really hold them tight we've tried to put these together on the outside and then roll them in or carry them in as one big long piece much what you might do with uh, with other types of pipe but they just don't hold them together that well honestly they hold them together long enough that you can get the sand over top of them anyway make sure your seam your little flap is up top like we talked about this little feller down here there you go we'll get this all coupled together I'll show you how we space it out and we'll start getting sand on top of it So it is the following morning, about seven o'clock. There is a chance of rain today, so that's we got that going for us. Inspection is in a couple hours. I'll show you what we got done yesterday, a little bit more detail what that time lapse was that you guys just watched. GoPro still doing the GoPro things. I'm not sure what's up with that. I messed with it a little bit last night. I just anything other than the external battery, it won't record any clips and that's kind of frustrating but i did just go ahead and order another one i mean why not my two month cycle is up right i did decide while we're waiting for inspection although i have a couple other things to do but one thing i want to go ahead and get knocked out is uh just trim the top of those stumps off while we're waiting i thought about getting one of the gas saws out either the 72 or that little even that little 120 would do a, a good job with it but i just don't feel like sharpening those chains and uh Kind of like using the battery powered saw for trash cuts, if you will. That way it's less chain I have to touch up when it's all said and done. That'll work for that one.
Well, a fella can't be right every day, huh? Let me give you a little tour of what we got going on, and we'll get it all cleaned up and backfilled. By the way, I didn't plan on putting the tank in in this video. I plan on making a separate video out of it, but I'm just kind of in the hurry. The weather's being a little finicky, so instead of wasting the time and trying to make a video out of installation on a septic tank, we're just going to knock it out and throw it in this video. Surprise! Bonus! Anyway, here's what we got. Anyway, can you see the YouTube yacht right up through there? It's the boat looking thing through the woods. The septic line will run right down this hill and it's gonna come screaming down this hill a thousand miles an hour at the minimum. Could probably put a loop-de-loop -loop in there to be honest with you. And we're gonna have it go into this D-box. Now, if you're familiar with septic systems, you're probably trying to figure out why we put a distribution box in. Typically what you do, you come in an inlet, one of these, and then you have multiple pipes running out to multiple different beds. It's in the name, distribution box. It distributes evenly the gray water. We're using this as a break. As it comes screaming down that hill, it's gonna just, you know, all through here and then calm down a little bit and then it can gently enter into the chambers. It just seems like it'd be better for the system if it just kind of flows in instead of screams in there. It comes in this side all the way down there is a minimum of four inches of depth depth on top of this pipe that's what they require i can show you probably in here somewhere there you go there's the top of the pipe and for reference there's a minimum of four inches of sand on top of the pipe comes down that line loops on back around heads back the other way loops back around this way and that's the end of it. And then this is the low vent. It allows that airflow. The septic system is the high vent, or the septic tank. Up through there, the vent for the house, or the YouTube yacht, will technically be the high vent for the system. The next step, finish getting the sand down to those ends. And I'll show you the main thing the inspector wants to see. They want to see, one, the bed is the correct dimensions. Two, make sure you bought the right sand, the state sand, 
And the third biggest thing, not only the connections in the pipe, but shooting the elevation from the end of the pipe from one end to the other to make sure it's perfectly level so that the water, you know, just kind of sits in there. You don't want it, you don't want it running through there like crazy. You want it to take its time and sit in there and perk out like it's supposed to do. So we shot everything with the laser. She was happy with it. She likes it. We're ready to cover everything up. The next step, they require a minimum of four inches of topsoil. Anything that'll grow grass or weeds or what have you needs to go over top to protect the sand from eroding out. So that's what we're gonna do after this. We're getting real close. And then we're gonna, listen, I put the service Subaru into action today. So like I said, the next step, take the John Deere 120, cover everything else up with sand that we had to leave open for the inspection, rake everything out, get it nice and even, any extra sand we had left over. This is sand at the bottom of the pile. When I'm setting the sand on the system, I try to take everything off the top so it's good and clean sand. Once we get done with this, I'll take everything off the bottom. It mixes in third a little bit, and then you can kind of lose that around the system where it's not as important to have the cleanest of sand. Use a 755 to clean the smaller section of the pile up. And then took dirt off the upper side of this road, the uphill part, trying to make a smoother transition. One, I need the dirt to cover up the system, but two, I want to smooth this transition out so it's easier to run the sewer line up to the YouTube yacht itself, and then back to the 755 to kind of polish everything up. We'll give you another quick overview on this, then we'll head up and get the tank set. Well, that's what we ended up with for the time being. Still have some tree mess over there to clean up and Quite a bit of tree mess here to clean up, but that's good wintertime work. Cut those up into piles and burn them. I was able to take enough out here. Now remember, the line's going to come right through there, so I want to kind of bring that transition in so we can even level that grade out even just a little bit more before it goes in there to slow it down. But the main reason I want to do this also is right now, anytime I come in here, I have to pull in and then back out. Well, now I can come in and there's enough room with a pickup truck or a car or a tractor side by side, you can whip her around right here. Now, of course, I've got some treated four inch posts up at the barn. I'll end up putting some four inch posts and a little fence along here. It just looks too flat and convenient for somebody to turn around it. If I don't put anything up, somebody will definitely come in here and whip her around, get her hung up, put her in four low and just, you know, absolutely aerate the heck out of the septic system. And that's not what we want to do, but it does look pretty decent. I left the D-Box exposed because obviously we still have to make that connection. And this looks okay on the back side. I gave her the old pat down 5000 to just kind of hold the shape. Once it gets a little rain on it, I'll put the pulverizer on that tractor. I'll come down here and then I can run up and down this. But I want it to get a little rain so it settles that down just a little bit. I don't want to get stuck there with the tractor either and tear it up too much. You can run over this with the lawnmower. With that tractor you can go over this to keep it mowed down you don't have to stay off of it as far as that goes but i wouldn't run your car across it or a d4 or a d11 i don't know what you're bringing to the party but whatever it is if it's bigger than that tractor i wouldn't put it on there okay next thing we've got we gotta get this tank in the ground it's 11 30 and i have till three o'clock today to get that tank in the ground so before we even go dig the hole we should probably make sure we can actually pick this tank up with the 120. These used to come without the lid on them. The tank and the lid were separate and it was easy for the 120 to pick them up. But now they come pre-assembled with the gasket and everything in there and you can't pull that off there. You'll end up cracking this and having to redo all that gasket. So you gotta lift it as one. It's got these little notches on each end for the chain. Mike's got this little spreader bar he made for it. Hopefully, hopefully there's a hook in here. We'll see if we can even pick this thing up. There it goes.
We'll be going right here where this dead ash tree is. We'll take that out, dig a hole for the tank in. If you look real close, you can see the vent pipe down through the trees. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a YouTube yacht for reference. So it's 48 feet from the stern of the YouTube yacht. Yeah, we're gonna call it that to where the inlet of the tank is gonna be. You need a quarter inch of fall every foot. 48 feet times a quarter inch should be about 12 inches of fall. If my math is correct, we need to add the amount of fall plus the height to the inlet, which is over here. Well, let's double check this. Upstate brush control. Anyway, there's uh, an opening on either side. This should be the inlet side. The inlet's gonna be higher than the outlet. You know, see, it's a good thing we checked. That one's clearly higher than the outlet. That measurement is off the invert. It's off the bottom of that pipe coming out of the YouTube yacht. So we'll measure to the bottom of this. Which is 42. You guys see that this tape measure has numbers on both sides? Is that not... Simple solutions, like common sense things, just send me over the top. I am in love with that. Anywho... 42 to the bottom of the tank. Can't believe I'm gonna write this out. 42 plus 12, 54. And I wanna put a little bit of stone on the bottom as well. I'm fairly positive we're gonna get into some rock. I wanna make sure it's got a good, good flat bottom, no rocks protruding up underneath that could crack the bottom. So let's just add another four inches. Let's say 58 inches. You know what? Just to make sure we have extra fault, let's just get crazy here. 60, let's do it. 60 inches. That's what we're doing. Unless we hit rock, then we'll go 58. Right here. There's there. It was right there. I promise. It was right there. I wouldn't lie to you. It's the bottom of the pit. Okay. Before I even paint anything off, I just need to get that tree down and some of the stuff scraped up out of the way. So, uh, any paint marks I put on the ground now, they're going to disappear by the time that tree's on the ground. What's living under here? Nothing. Good. Good.
getting close, getting real close. Just kind of clean up the edges. The good news is we didn't hit any big rock down here. We don't have to mess with putting stone in the bottom of it. I'm pretty happy with it. This is the material that's under there. The tank will sit fine on that. Sit just fine. Got it all raked out, leveled across there. The bottom looks great. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm a little bit nervous. This is kind of a tricky pick and um, I don't really have a great spot. I'm not 100% sure it's about to happen, but I'm 100% sure you guys are gonna watch. Battery cake. Oh. Can you see it? Can you see it? Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hard to tell this way because this daggone thing's right in the middle. So it is in. That's as far as I'm going with it today. We won't make the connection to the YouTube yacht until we get the paddle wheel on. I'm gonna need a piece of equipment down that backside, picking and setting the paddle wheel there. I don't wanna to have to worry about sewage pipes underneath and watching where I'm twisting and turning. I just wanna be able to focus on that job. So we'll wait on that. We're also gonna wait on routing it down through the woods. I did put a bucket over the outlet on this side. The inlet got covered up, but that is okay. Yes, it will have a manhole riser access. I didn't put any of that on yet. We'll put all that on when we run the rest of the sewage line with the 304. My main concern with it in the hole now is it floating on us. And yeah, concrete tanks will 100% float on you. I know because I've repaired a couple that have float whenever we installed them. We got a surprise rain overnight we didn't expect. Even with a little dirt on top, they still floated out. And that is a mess to try to fix that. It's a pain in the butt. And I don't have a good way to get water down here right now. That's what I need. I need to get a hold of somebody with a water tank and fill the thing up with water so it stays in the hole. But for the time being, a bunch of dirt will do the trick. And everything else is filled in enough that nobody can really fall in and get hurt. But everything's kind of exposed, so we'll be ready to go and get on the next step. I'm excited. This is huge. It's not like a wow step. It's not a paddle wheel or 
concrete floor or framing or anything that stands out great in the thumbnail in fact when it's all said and done you shouldn't even know it's there but it is a big big step for the project by far the most expensive single step we've taken is my math right somewhere around five or six grand for everything when, when you take into account everything and the equipment rental it's a big step so i'm pretty excited about it i'm pretty excited that it's done hopefully i can get a good decent weather day next week i'll take the 755 and pulverizer polish everything up on the field bed get some seed and straw on it and then that'll be 100 percent done tomorrow i'm going to work for dirt perfect so i'll have that video coming out soon as well and lots of great stuff coming to the channel i'm hoping maybe this weekend we can get the bell tower pressure washed and painted so maybe that'll be coming as well too lots of cool stuff coming lots of projects coming along and we're just we're moving along on this stuff i can't wait i will say my buddy said he needs his sawmill back in two weeks which means we will do be doing a lot of milling coming up for the goat barn so that'll be coming up as well lots of stuff to get done but man this is a big one i just like just right off the shoulders you know i feel so good right now i feel exhausted adrenaline dump because we didn't flip the excavator mike's favorite 120 favorite machine trying to awkwardly set that tank but uh i feel great this is so i don't you get it i'm happy hope you guys are happy hope you're having a good whatever it is you're having as always thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one and if you're wondering what i was in such a big hurry to get to it's a haircut i've got a haircut look at me i look I just let her go. I've been on vacation for two weeks from work. And I just let her go.